So what happened from the 70s to now that led to the crisis we just saw? Um, we don't have a lot of time to go into detail, but, but I, I guess I'd sum it up in three ways, three, three important developments. <clears throat> One, I think regulators failed to do their jobs. I think that's, that's very clear that they were uh, allowing banks to take excessive risk. Well, one example of this, uh, the structured investment vehicle, which you may have heard of. It's an off-balance sheet entity. Banks would claim to the regulators that, hey, we can park our risk over here. It's independent from us. If it fails, it's, it's not going to hit our balance sheet. Uh, you should let us do these things. And, and the bank regulators surprisingly agreed to that. Uh, and what ended up happening, of course, was that the city groups of the world, uh, once, once the uh, proverbial crap hit the fan, they took these things back on their balance sheet because they had so much reputational risk from these city ones and city two SIVs. Uh, and in fact, there's evidence after the fact that they were in fact giving explicit guarantees on this stuff, that they were backing it, even though they had told the regulators the opposite. And yet the second thing I think that happened obviously was the emergence of the shadow financial system, shadow banking system. Uh, this was large pockets of uh, bank-like activity through securitization and they claimed that they could manage their own risk by sending out, you know, by, by securitizing private, privately originated mortgages and other credit assets. They could dice these into securities, sell them off uh, disparately, diversely, uh, you know, and have rating agencies rate them, and then the risk would be understood and, and managed and dispersed. Uh, obviously, that, that was flawed. Uh, the third, I think, important development was the concentration of risk, as Alex mentioned, too big to fail institutions, as they're being called, or, or tier one FHCs, as the administration is calling them. And then the rise of too big to fail institutions, this, this is obviously development that occurred for a number of reasons. Uh, and I think it's important to understand that like, right now we are facing a situation where the, the incentives are aligned to become too big to fail. You now enjoy an effective implicit guarantee from the federal government that they will bail you out should you hit, hit hard times. Uh, that lowers your cost of capital. I, I think that has a whole host of implications. 